Welcome. This session summarises the results of the research and needs survey conducted in 2020 by Federation University Library. The survey was run as a means of obtaining information from researchers about how they conduct their research, the impact of changes in the research landscape, and their views on a range of issues, especially relating to skills development. The survey also provided an opportunity to inform the continuous review and development of programs and services for researchers across the university. Cheryl and I acknowledge the custodians of the lands and waters where Federation University campuses are located and recognise their continuing responsibilities to care for country at these sites of teaching and learning. We pay our respects to elders past and present and extend our respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander First Nation peoples. The survey was quite extensive, so in this session, Cheryl and I will focus briefly on the background to the survey and highlight some of the results and what they indicated in terms of skill development opportunities for the library. The results will be compared to those from other recent surveys of Australian researchers. The survey was adapted from the University of Newcastle survey tool, which had been made available to call members with modifications to terminology to match Federation University usage. Questions were also added or amended to focus on areas of particular interest, such as article processing charges and research spaces for networking. The survey was run over three weeks during July 2020 and 80 responses were received. Responses were received from staff and higher degree by research students based across all campuses and associated with all schools. Because this, the survey is run during COVID, we're not clear on the possible impact on the number of responses, as well as the potential downplaying of the importance of non-digital resources in some disciplines. In terms of promotion strategies, we use the online university newsletter, which comes out daily, a variety of social media, emails direct to the schools and school newsletters. The library sought and obtained ethics approval so that we could specifically report on permit reporting, sharing and reuse of data. The results provide the potential for benchmarking against other institutions, as well as providing a baseline for further internal surveys and there is the potential to alternate with the biennial in-sync survey feedback as well. <laughs> of those respondents who have published, 54% have published open access articles, and of these most, 60%, have published between one and three articles, with the smaller number, 34%, indicating having published four or more articles. While not all open access articles required payment of an article processing charge, where there was a charge for open access publication, this had generally been paid by a non-Federation University collaborator, by the researcher's school, centre or department, or from research grant income. Hearsay evidence indicates that the APC cost is a barrier and the university is considering strategies to inform sustainable open access options for its researchers. With regard to the storage and preservation of data, respondents indicated that they generally worked with research data on their own computer or on Federation University cloud or network storage. Use of cloud storage external to Federation University was less frequent. There was a higher than expected usage of external devices such as USBs across all categories of usage. The number of respondents who indicated these are the ways they preserve data is concerning, indicating a need to continue to provide development opportunities around data management and promote the more reliable and secure storage options. The Curtin survey indicated that desktop computers, 56%, flash drives and portable hard drives, representing 54%, remain popular storage solutions and that 50% of respondents stored their data with an external storage provider. Most respondents, 61%, indicated that they were aware of open research data. In addition, some 14% of respondents had used open research data in their research, and 5% had made their own research data available for reuse. 
The low number who have made their data open indicates some work still to do in raising awareness and making researchers cognizant of the options open to them. In the Curtin survey, 29% want to make their data publicly discoverable. In the CDU survey, over 25% had made their research data available and nearly half expected to do so in the future. The response to this question reflects um, the previously indicated lack of awareness of open research data, with concerns being expressed by some of the respondents who are aware of open research data. The comments indicate concerns relating to the ethics of reuse, including lack of clearance through the ethics process. Issues around intellectual property, often involving industry or commercial partners in research, privacy issues and concerns that publication of data would jeopardise written publication outputs by the researcher. Respondents to the Swinburne survey voiced similar concerns, together with the possibility of not receiving credit for the data set and loss of control over how the data will be used. 77% of respondents indicated they had an ORCID and of these, 61% had activated linkages to the publications and or peer reviews with Scopus, Web of Science and Publoms, for example. These figures probably reflect an ongoing project by library staff to contact published staff who do not have or have not linked their ORCID with other IDs and to, if necessary, assist them with this process. Respondents indicated that the most important services provided directly by library staff were interlibrary and resource sharing services, advice relating to copyright and intellectual property issues, and services to manage references, endnote in the Federation context. Also noted as important was assistance with publications management IRMA, ORCID and ERA. The library continues to provide services in these areas with multiple EndNote sessions a semester, as well as EndNote assistance offered at point of need. We're working closely with the Copyright Officer to improve the information available for researchers on the university website and continue to collaborate closely with research services around publications management issues. A further analysis was conducted on the responses to have a look at any differences that might exist between the HASS related disciplines and STEM. The results did show differences in some areas, um, including particularly open access publications, payment of APCs, uh, the type of working data, open data awareness and levels of ORCID registration. A summary of areas indicated in all responses, as well as specific areas flagged by researchers, provided a list focused on greater awareness of and skills in managing research data. In addition, skills in quantitative data analysis was also mentioned. A separate analysis of HDR responses also indicated academic writing and access to resources as areas of perceived need. The library will continue to address these and work with our partners in areas where they have the expertise. The most common response when asked about current needs was researcher time. So providing development opportunities which are an efficient use of researchers' time as well as effective needs to be a key consideration. So where to next now that we've run our inaugural research and needs survey? The library will work with other stakeholders across the university to extend the newly developed Common Skills Development Calendar, which incorporates programs run by the library, research services and the Research Graduate School through its skill development program. We will also work with University Research Committee to ensure that our training options are relevant and effective. A future survey of researchers will provide further feedback on how successful our initiatives are and no doubt also indicate new areas for us to consider for skills development programs. We hope that the survey instrument, the report and the quantitative data set that you identified 
will be added to Federation Fig Share later in 2021 under Creative Commons licence. The full title of the three other surveys referenced in the presentation are given there, and there the email contact addresses for Cheryl and myself are provided as well, and we welcome any queries, questions or requests for further information. And thank you very much for your interest.